and the most important presence here today is uh, Jesus. He's here. Uh, his presence is here today. And that's what I, that's what I pray. I say, Lord, we, we need your presence. We need you to be here. We want to draw close to you. That's what we've come here to do corporately as a church family. Uh, worshiping the king in the country to be near the Lord, you know, and, and uh, that's what we're all about is worshiping him. So you can turn in your Bibles, if you like, to Psalms 100. Psalms 100, our title of our message this morning, Take Time to Be Thankful. Take Time to Be Thankful. Uh, you might have noticed out here on our church sign, we posted on our church sign a little saying we do uh, once in a while, the saying says, Thanksgiving is not just a day, it is a lifestyle. Thanksgiving is not just a day, although it is a day, it's a wonderful day, but it is also a lifestyle. When we are thankful, we are happy. When we are not thankful, when we are ungrateful, we are not happy. We may think that being happy or being rather unhappy leads to complaining. But actually, it's truer that by complaining, we become unhappy. By complaining, we become unhappy. So we want to not complain and to be thankful. Always find something to be thankful for. And then we will bring happiness into our lives. Being thankful is the key to happiness. A thankful spirit is a triumphant spirit. Amen. A thankful spirit is a triumphant spirit. Let's read Psalms 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, O ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and enter in his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your presence, and we do indeed enter into your presence today with thanksgiving and with praise and adoration towards you, thanking you because we know that you are good and your mercy endures forever. And God, we ask your blessings upon the preaching of your word your anointing upon the preaching of your word, the hearing of your word, the receiving of it, and the walking out of the same. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. amen. So why does God call us to have an attitude of gratitude? Why is it that God calls for us to have a thankful spirit? Is it because God needs us to have that thankful spirit? No, it's because God knows that we need to have that thankful spirit in our lives. Because we need it. Learning to be thankful, whether it is to God or whether it's to other people, prevents us from taking granted the wonderful things that God has blessed us with and the wonderful things that other people do for us in our lives. We don't want to take for granted those things. We want to be thankful for those things. The less that we take for granted in our life, the more pleasure and joy life is going to bring us. Thanksgiving reminds us of that, right? Amen. Thanksgiving Day doesn't commemorate a battle or anyone's birthday or any anniversaries of any sort. It is a day set aside for our nation to express thanks to our nation's God the God of the Bible, the one true God, Jehovah God. And in 1789, George Washington made a proclamation 
and I'll read just a portion of it. By the President of the United States of America, a proclamation. Whereas it is the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of Almighty God, to obey His will, to be grateful for His benefits, and to humbly to implore His protection and His favor. And whereas, he goes on to say in his proclamation, both houses of Congress have by their joint committee requested me to recommend to the people of the United States a day of public thanksgiving and prayer to be observed by acknowledging with grateful hearts the many favors of Almighty God. Now, therefore, I do recommend and assign Thursday, the 26th day of November next, to be devoted to the service of that great and glorious being. He's talking about God Almighty, Jehovah God, who is the author of all the good that was, of all the good that is, and all the good that ever will be. So read the very first president, Thanksgiving proclamation. There are many things that we do at Thanksgiving that we should be doing every single day. So we're going to look at some of the things that we do at Thanksgiving. And uh, because it's a holiday, some of the things we do physically because of Thanksgiving that we should be doing every day spiritually. Number one, number one, take time to invite. Take time to invite. One of the things we do at Thanksgiving is we invite people over, right? Uh, I know Lisa and I have had several invitations. Y'all can come to our house for Thanksgiving. Y'all can come to our house. Uh, we've had several invitations already, and we've invited people. I'm sure that many of you have done the same thing. Just as we invite friends and family over for Thanksgiving, we need to be inviting friends and family and even enemies <laughs> uh, to church every day. We need to be inviting people to come to church. In John chapter 1, we see the power of the invite. Andrew had just met Jesus, and we see in John 1, 41 and 42, the first thing that Andrew did after meeting Jesus. He says there, uh, he first findeth his brother Simon, and said unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ, and he brought him to Jesus. We should be inviting and bringing people to Jesus every single day. That's what Andrew did. The first thing he did, this was, this was the original bring a friend to church section found in the Word of God. <laughs> and we need to be bringing people to Jesus. That's one of our, our duties as a born-again Christian, actively working uh, to win the lost, to bring them to Jesus, to show them the way. Now, if you think about it, the way that most of us came to church and ultimately came to a relationship with Jesus Christ is because someone invited us, right? I mean, think about it. That's the way we came. That's the way we came. Now, there's there's other reasons that people would come to church and ultimately come to a saving grace of Jesus Christ and make Him Lord and Savior of their life. But you will find that most, most, because they were invited by a friend to come to church. The biggest reason that we don't invite people to come to church is fear, fear of rejection. We think, oh, but what if we ask them to come and they don't come? Oh, but what if we ask them to come and they do come and they don't like it? <laughs> it's, it's fear. We're not afraid to ask people over for Thanksgiving, are we? No, if they come, they come. If they don't, they don't. No big deal, right? <laughs> and if they come and they don't like the food, surely they'll find something they like. There's all kinds of food out there. That should be our same attitude. That, it's not our job. We're not the one that, that brings them to a relationship with Jesus Christ. We're just inviting them because we know the way, the truth, and the life. And we're inviting them to meet Jesus. And that's, that's our job. 
Then Jesus does the rest. God does the rest. So instead of being afraid and thinking, what if they don't come? We should think, oh, but what if they do come? And, and the Lord changes their life. And they ask Jesus in their heart. And their name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And they're on their way to heaven. What if they do come? Remember, we give the invitation. God does the rest. Don't be afraid to invite. We should be inviting people to church all the time. Number two, take time to prepare. Take time to prepare. Prepare for the meal. That takes a lot of time. Many of you are already making preparations. I, I was talking to Dale the other day. He said, no, I'm not, Wednesday, I'll start cooking. So, <laughs> but he's already making preparations even now, right? I know that. Uh, the turkey doesn't just walk up and, and, uh, and sit down on the front porch and knock on the door, you know. Uh, the potatoes don't just jump out of the ground into the mailbox. You know, you got you to go out and get them. You gotta, and you got to prepare in advance. Here, here's a Thanksgiving week list that I saw on Facebook. I thought it was kind of cute. A Thanksgiving week list. You see it there on the slide. Uh, is spend $200 in groceries. Uh, take 10 hours making dinner food eaten in 20 minutes, and take five hours to clean up. Does that sound about right? <laughs> so we spend all that time preparing for a 20-minute meal. But, but the question is, how much time are we spending preparing for our eternity? We are going to spend eternity somewhere. What, what are we doing in, in, to prepare what we're doing now, we are preparing for our eternity and where we're going to spend eternity. The biggest decision that we will ever make in life is not what we're going to have for Thanksgiving dinner. The biggest decision that we'll ever make in life is whether or not we're going to serve the Lord. The decision in our life to, to stop living for ourselves and live for the Lord. To believe that Jesus died upon the cross for our sins. To believe that Jesus uh, took our place and died for us so that we could live. And that so that we could live in heaven with him forever and ever. Forever and ever. We need to be preparing for the day that we see Jesus face to face. 2 Corinthians 5 and 10 tells us, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And everyone, that everyone may receive the things done in this body or everything done in this life, what is going on right now according to what he has done, whether it be good or whether it be bad. We need to be preparing now for that day. How do we prepare? Well, first off, by asking Jesus into our heart and asking him to forgive us of our sins and thanking him for dying on the cross. And then from there, we need to be preparing by coming to church, by reading our devotions daily, by daily reading the word of God, and by daily spending time in prayer. Which brings us to point three, take time to pray. Take time to pray. Thursday, Thanksgiving Day, there will be many prayers of Thanksgiving offered, a lot of them. And in many American homes, the Thanksgiving meal prayer will be the only prayer that is prayed until next Thanksgiving. <laughs> that's sad. I laugh, but that's sad, isn't it? Yeah. We must pray every day. We must take the time to pray every day. Paul says it like this in Colossians 4 and 2. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. In other words, as we pray, we are thankful to God. We're not just coming to God with a, a, a Santa Claus Christmas list that we want. We're coming saying thank you for what you have done. Thank you for what you are doing in my life now. And thank you, God, for what you are going to do in my future. Thank you, Lord. We should not 
have the attitude or we should not think, oh, I have to pray. No, that should not be our attitude at all. Our attitude should be, I get to pray. I have the privilege to come to God Almighty and to thank Him for His goodness and greatness in my life and to lay my petitions before Him in faith. It's not so much about the amount of prayer. If we set a goal of praying once a day, three times a day, whatever, whatever it is, that's between you and the Lord. Or we may set a goal, I'm going to pray five minutes a day. I'm going to pray one minute a day. I'm going to pray 30 minutes a day. Whatever it is that you set, whatever time you set, it's not about that. Don't get hung up on that. Because then if you don't do that, the devil's going to use that to kick you when you're down, when you miss that opportunity. If you miss a, a daily devotion, uh, don't let the devil beat you up about it. If, you, if life got in the way and you went all day and you didn't take the time to pray that you wanted to take or you didn't take the time to read God's word that you wanted to, to take, whatever it may be, don't let the devil beat you up about that. Uh, God's grace is sufficient for whatever is in our life. Let God strengthen you in your life. It's going to be okay. So it's not about how much or how often. It's just about that you took time to pray. That we take time to pray. Take time to humble ourselves before the Lord and to thank Him for His grace in our life. Take time to acknowledge our dependency and our need upon Him in our daily life. You see, we began this relationship with the Lord God Almighty with a prayer, a prayer of salvation. And we will continue this relationship with the Lord Almighty with prayer. James says it this way in James 5, 13. If any among you are afflicted, let him pray. And that means what he's saying there, that you are having troubles. Uh, anybody ever have troubles? <laughs> Pray. That's what he's saying to do. When you're having trouble, when things are, are, are just feel like they're coming against you, he says, pray. Yeah. Pray. Let him sing songs of praise. If there's any sick, let him call on the elders of the church. Let them pray, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith, the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he's committed any sins, they'll be forgiven. And he goes on in verse 16, he says, Confess your faults one to another, pray for one another that you may be healed. I love this part right here. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. What he's saying here is our prayers are powerful and our prayers are effective. Did you hear that? Amen? Do you believe that? Our prayers are powerful and they are effective. Prayer changes things. Our prayers whether grand and glorious or short and simple. It doesn't matter. Our prayers move the hand of God. Amen. James tells us to pray the prayer of faith. What is the prayer of faith? The prayer of faith is, is a prayer that places faith in the one true God. Prayer that confesses that our God, Jehovah, is the all-knowing, all-powerful, and ever-present God. A prayer that believes that God hears when we pray. A prayer that believes that God answers when we pray and he will work things out for our good. Prayer is not about changing God's mind. Prayer is about changing our mind, changing our heart and our will to be God's heart and God's will so that we'll have the mind of Christ, so that we'll see things the way God sees them, so that we'll see things the way that God wants us to see them. In 2 Kings chapter 6, the enemy was attacking Elijah. Have you ever felt like the enemy was attacking you? Uh, I think Jacqueline said uh, some things about that as she sang this morning. It felt like the enemy was just attacking well, the enemy was attacking Elijah and his servant. And the enemy sent horses and chariots and a powerful force and surrounded the city 
in what Elijah and his servant was staying in. And when Elijah's servant went out the next morning to take a nice deep breath of fresh air, he looked out and saw the enemy's army, all of the chariots and all the, the vast horses and the enemy uh, strong force coming against them. And the servant goes back into the house and says, Elijah, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Well, James said, and then he afflicted him, what are you going to do? Pray. <laughs> Pray and praise. That's what he said. So Elijah answered him in 2 Kings 6 and 16. He said, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. There are more that are for us than they that are against us. Anytime the enemy is coming against you, I want you to remember that there are many more that are for you than those that are against you. And if God be for us, Scripture says, who can be against us? My version of that is, is if God be for me, you might as well be. <laughs> and then Elijah goes on uh, and he prays. Elijah prays, just like James said, we pray. Uh, when the enemy is coming against us, we pray and we praise God. And as Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. See, God's will is that we see things his way, not in the natural, but in the spiritual. And the Lord opened the eyes of the servant. And he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire. That saw that there were many more on, on his side than the enemy had. And they were round about Elijah. Prayer changes things. Prayer changes our heart. Prayer changes our mind. Prayer changes our vision so that we'll see the way God wants us to see. Which brings us to point number four. <laughs> Take time to focus. Take time to focus. I always say the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. <laughs> we need to focus. So what, what is the main thing at Thanksgiving? It's the turkey. I'm not talking about your uncle. I'm talking about the turkey and the dressing and the giving of gravy. That's the main thing, right? That's the main course. So what is the main thing in our life? The main thing in our life is not us. The main thing in our life is Jesus Christ. That's the main thing in our life. He is number one. We are second. He is first in our life. I, I don't want Jesus to be my co-pilot. I want him to be my pilot. <laughs> Amen. Uh, he is the number one. We enjoy this abundant life that he has given us. We enjoy the peace and the love and the joy that we have, not because of who we are, not because of what we have done, but because of who he is and because of what he has done. He is the main thing. Psalms 145 and 5 says, I will speak of the glorious honor, or, or you may say, I will speak of the glorious splendor of thy majesty. I will speak of the glorious splendor of the Lord God Almighty and of thy wondrous works. Hallelujah. And be thankful and be thankful. Remember, Thanksgiving is all about giving thanks to God for what he has done, for what he is doing now, and for what he will do. And number five, point number five, take time to eat. <laughs> take time to eat. I don't know about you uh, and in your family, but it seems like uh, in my family at Thanksgiving, we eat all day long. I mean, is, are we the only one? We, <laughs> we just eat all day long. Uh, allow me to read a, a Thanksgiving poem uh, this morning. "'Twas the night of Thanksgiving, but I just couldn't sleep. I tried counting backwards, I tried counting sheep. The leftovers beckoned the dark meat and white, but I fought the temptation with all of my might. Tossing and turning with anticipation, the thought of a snack became invitation. So I raced to the kitchen, flung open the door, and gazed at the fridge full of goodies galore. I gobbled up turkey and buttered potatoes, 
pickles and carrots, beans and tomatoes. I felt myself swelling so plump and so round till all of a sudden I rose off the ground. I crashed through the ceiling, floating into the sky with a mouthful of pudding and a handful of pie. But I managed to yell as I soared past the trees, happy eating to all, pass the cranberries, please. <laughs> so it, it says, may your stuffings be tasty, may your turkey be plump, may your potatoes and gravy have nary a lump. May your yams be delicious, may your pies take the prize, and may your Thanksgiving dinner stay off of your thighs. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> Amen. That's a good blessing there, isn't it? In most cases, Thanksgiving Day is a day that we eat to overfill it. But God desires for us to fill with His presence, Amen. to be filled with His love, to be filled with His joy, to be filled with His peace every single day. Paul says it this way in Ephesians 3 and 19, to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that he that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Yes, I'm going to be full on Thursday, Thanksgiving Day, but I'm being filled today with the goodness and the greatness of God. Amen? And I want to be filled every single day. But it's our job to open our hearts. It's our job to pull up to the table of the Lord. You understand what I'm saying? And it's our job to open our hearts and, and, and to receive what God has for us every single day and allow His Spirit to flow in us and through us. And number six, take time to fellowship. Take time to fellowship. I look forward to getting together with family uh, Thursday, getting together with friends. I also look very forward to every Sunday. Uh, to getting together with our church family and, and fellowshipping with church family and, and singing together and just being in the presence of the Lord together. Uh, fellowship is so important for our spiritual walk. It's important. Why is fellowship so important? It's important for us to, to realize and to know that we're not alone. We are not alone. We are in this together. You, we may be sitting here feeling this way or that way or going through this or that and thinking we're the only one. I'm the only one that feels this way and that way. No, you're not. No, you're not. Uh, you may think, well, I'm the only one that's going through this and that. No, you're not. We're in this together. Uh, we've been through some things. We're going through some things. Things are happening in all of our lives. And we are in this together. And we need, we need each other. I need you. I need, I'm, I'm thankful to God for each and every one of you. And, and I, I hope that to some degree you need me in your life. <laughs> you know, that we need one another. I look forward to coming and seeing your face and, and fellowship. And we still can't hug, but I'm, I'm, I'm in my heart, I'm hugging away. <laughs> I'm hugging everybody. <laughs> but uh, we'll get back to that soon, won't we? We're, we're huggers here at Stoke Assembly of God, aren't we? We're huggers. First John 1 and 7 says, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we will have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. And number seven, number seven. See, it didn't take me long to get through these seven points, did it? <laughs> and uh, Jimmy and Tanya's going to come and, and prepare to bless us as we, as we close our, our service. Number seven. Number seven, this point's not going to take very long, so I told him to go ahead and come on up. Because I don't take very long naps, but take time to nap. <laughs> Sometimes I take a pretty long nap. Take time to nap. There's nothing like a good Thanksgiving nap. Am I right? Am I right? There's nothing like a good Sunday afternoon nap either, is there? <laughs> don't go to sleep yet, though. <laughs> you got you to go eat lunch first. But uh, I, love, I love the writer of Hebrews 4 and 11 says, Let us therefore be diligent to enter into that nap. Oh no, enter into that rest. I'm sorry. <laughs> but isn't it true? Isn't it true that we come to the Lord and we find rest? Now I understand that, that 
There's a lot of things. And, 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 and you know what? It's not that I understand. I, I want us to realize that God understands. God knows. God knows that there are things going on in your life and in your family. There are reasons. There are reasons uh, for stress in your life. There are reasons for that. But that's not God's will for our lives. God doesn't want us to be stressed. I mean, you, you, you spell stressed backwards. It's dessert. I don't know if that means anything to you. <laughs> Nothing like bluebell ice cream when you start to get stressed out. <laughs> but uh, but uh, don't be stressed. Have a blizzard. But anyway, but uh, also, uh, uh, I believe that's of God. But anyway, so... <laughs> Uh, there's a lot of reasons to be troubled. I know, but more importantly, God knows. There's circumstances. I know, but more importantly, God knows. And God has for us his peace. God has for us his rest. Jesus tells us in Matthew 11, 28, Come unto me, he says. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Don't, all, the, all these heavy things that we try to carry around, uh, Jesus said, don't, don't get, get rid of those and take my yoke upon you. Yoke together with me. Be united with me, he says, and learn from me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. Now that's a nap worth taking. <laughs> it's entering in. I, mean, I, I pray that as you came in, today into the presence of the Lord right here that you just kind of felt an unloading of stuff in your life and, and just, just felt the peace of God and just, just felt lifted up and lightened because God just began to take those things but, but our prayer also is is that you walk out, you don't pick them back up you don't pick them back up just leave them with the Lord enter his rest enter his rest Thank you.